Welcome to Prejim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 9 of ADU.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about retrieving two or more result sets using the SQL Data Reader object's next result method. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch part 7 and 8 of this video series. There are no more um, slides in this video session. It's going to be completely demo driven. So let's flip to Visual Studio. So what we basically want to do is I have two tables here within SQL Server. So TBL product inventory and TBL product categories. Now what I basically want to do is I want to combine these two queries into one command. So if I separate them using semicolon and then execute both of them together, I get two result sets. So this entire thing now I want to treat as one command within ADO.NET. Okay, so obviously when we execute this command, we get two result sets and I want to display these two result sets in a separate grid view control within an ASP.NET Web Application project. So let's see how to do that. So obviously to connect to this database, we need the connection string. So within web.config file, I have the connection string. The name of the connection string is dbcs and obviously it's pointing to the local server and the database name is sample where I'm using integrated security meaning Windows authentication so obviously I need to read this connection string within my web.config file so to do that we need to use the configuration manager class and the configuration manager class is present in system.configuration namespace so let's import that system.configuration so let's create a variable to hold the connection string so string cs is equal to configuration manager dot connection strings property and to this connection strings property you can either read the connection string using the integral indexer or this the connection string name okay now using connection string names is much better than use, using integral indexers because it's more readable so the name of our connection string here is dbcs let's copy that go back to code behind file copy the connection string there and use the connection string property and if you look at the return type it's going to return a string which is nothing but this connection string okay so now we need to create a SQL connection object so SQL connection and SQL connection object is present in system dot data dot SQL client namespace okay so let's create the SQL connection object SQL connection con is equal to new SQL connection and the constructor of the SQL connection class takes in a connection string as the parameter so let's pass that okay now if we want this connection object to be closed in a timely fashion either use try uh, I mean the finally block or use the using statement using statement ensures that the connection object is automatically closed when the scope of that object is lost we don't have to explicitly call the close method on the connection object so if you want your application to be scalable and more more efficient then always close your connections and reader objects in a timely fashion because these connection objects are actually very valuable and there are only a limited of them and we need to ensure they are properly closed and that too in a timely fashion alright so we have the SQL connection object now we need to prepare the SQL command so SQL command CMD is equal to new SQL command now look at this usually we only pass in one query but what I'm going to do now we are going to pass both of these two queries that are separated by semicolon so copy them and then I'm going to pass that's my command text and the next parameter that I want to pass obviously is the connection object which we have already created pass that so we have the command object ready now so now let's create the SQL data reader from the previous session we knew that you cannot create an instance of a SQL data reader using the new operator so obviously if you want to create the reader object you use the command objects execute reader method and if you look at that the return type of execute reader is SQL data reader so we have the SQL data reader object and if you want that to be closed in a timely fashion use the using block or you can also use try and finally block okay so we have the reader object now 
Now let's drag and drop two grid view controls onto this web form. Let's flip to the design view. So let's get the grid view control which should be under data tab so grid view and auto format that to look a little nice so that's one grid view control and let's put another grid view control okay let's auto format that maybe to something simple okay now let's give this grid view control some meaningful name so that we can identify rather than calling as grid view 1 and grid view 2 let's call this um, what do we have? We have products and categories. So let's call this products grid view. I'm going to call this categories grid view. Okay, so let's flip to the code behind page. Now, usually, if it is just one result set that we get back, then we say products grid view dot data source is equal to RDR. Okay, now we know that when we execute this query, we get two result sets back, and both of the result sets will be returned back to the SQL data reader object. Okay, so I'm setting that reader object as the data source for one grid view control, and I'm doing that the same thing for categories grid view control as well. Data source is equal to RDR. And let's call the data bind method and products grid view. And do the same thing for categories grid view. Okay. So now let's run this application and go and, and see what's going to happen. So obviously when this command gets executed, we, we get two result sets loaded into so obviously we got an error. Look at this. Execute reader connection uh, requires an open and available connection. The connection's current status is closed. So the reason why we get that is because we haven't opened the connection. So before we execute the command, we need to open the connection. So let's call that. Okay. So now let's run that once again. So obviously when this command that we have gets executed, we get two result sets back. And uh, look at this. I only get the products. And why is that? Because if you look at that, the first query is TBL product inventory. Okay, let's do it the other way around. Let's put the product categories here and then product inventory as the second query. Okay, let's put that within our application. See, first time, you know, we got only the products. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to change the query order. In the sense, I'm going to say first select star from TBL product categories and then select star from TBL product inventory. So does that show now only the product categories and not the inventory? Absolutely. So it's only showing categories now. It's not showing products. So now we know that when this query gets executed, okay, we know two result sets come. But then if you look at the output, I have only one shown in the grid view control. Okay, that's because you have to tell, you know, by default when the uh, result sets are loaded into the data reader object, you know, um, the reader will have the first result set, you know, ready, and the cursor will be at that result set. Now, if you want that cursor to move to the next result set and you want to use that next result set as the data source for your other grid view control, then you'll have to tell the reader object to move to the next result set. And how do we do that? Using the reader object's next result method. In the previous session, we have actually seen how to loop through records within a data reader object. We have used the SQL data readers read method. Okay, but then if you want to loop through the result sets within the data reader, then you use the next result method. So these two are very important methods within the SQL data reader object. Read method loops through the rows within um, you know, a result set. Whereas if you want to loop through between result sets themselves, then you use the next result method. And just like read method, this next result method is also going to return a true or false. So next result. And if you look at the signature, it's going to return a true or a false because the return type is Boolean. So while, while rdr.nextResult, what I want to do 
bind the reader to the categories grid view. So you can loop through as many result sets as you want. As long as there are more result sets within that, you know, it, it keeps on moving. This method will return true. The moment it reaches the ra last result set, it returns false and, you know, that's it. So let's run this now and see if it correctly binds, you know, both the result sets to both the grid view controls that we have. And now we should actually see that. Look at that. We have the products and we have the categories as expected. So to loop through records within the result set, use read method. To loop through between the result set themselves, then use next, results me next result method. On this slide, you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. Have a great day.